live on Facebook. Nice. Awesome. Gonna share it. Mm. Gonna hit record. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's yeah. the first time I hear mm -hmm. that. Is that new? Yeah, that's new for me too. Wow. Now we're all here. alerted. All right, it's live. Cool. We're going to take one moment and share it and then ready. Yeah, I'm just opening up the chat too. Thank you for doing that, Jesus. I'm oh. a keeper of the Facebook chat. Uh, I'm watching I'm it on Facebook and, and right now it's doing the thing where I think it's isolating each viewer instead of keeping us all four separate. Is that a separate option you can change on your Zoom panel, Rithika? Yes, I think I should be able to. Just looking at it one minute. How do I get comments to show up in the side on Facebook? Uh, well, I just went to the MTVO right like pay our facebook page and then i clicked on our live so it like became full screen and it just automatically pops mm. up the comments oh and then i can choose to hide me. them okay cool and then i just i just mute the video or pause it i have the gallery view selected on my end is it still yeah. showing a single speaker on your side pieces no now it looks like it's all four of us so okay. i think we should be good to go anything else we need to set up or how are we feeling I can just take you a moment for a change showing it on my page. Oh, it's yeah, my no worries. No worries. Jen, was that Raspberry Element E? No, that was uh, uh, Zitzes. Okay, yeah. Blueberry something. Anybody got any jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Why did the walrus cross the road? Why? I don't have an answer. <laughs> That's the joke. That's the joke. <laughs> That's disappointing. <laughs> but there could be a good answer on the other side of that, I feel. Ready. <laughs> That's our homework to have by the end of this episode, this show. Let's Let's do it. The last half of that joke. But right. I forgive you for failing that joke, Rachel. <laughs> I forgive myself for failing that joke. <laughs> you also <laughs> said Rithika, didn't you, Jen? I don't know. I'm used to having to work really hard to forgive you, Rithika, so probably. <laughs> <sighs> I forgive you for almost taking my name there, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Jesus is the only one that's irredeemable, basically, because not forgiving him for anything. I just He's have perfect. to sit here and apparently. Oh. Yep. Don't have to say anything and things happen. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else we have to set up or how are we doing? Good to go. All right. So, here we are. Hello, everybody in facebook land and watching wherever you're watching if you're watching afterwards and hello rachel jen rithika here we are for the is this now the third class concept yes yeah, the third class concept i promise that's important in some way and we're talking <laughs> about forgiveness today so yeah we have forgiveness to me is one of those topics where like the the value of it the the outcome it can have from you practicing and actually like allowing forgiveness to exist in your life is like massive but in the same space like whenever like be, having something a tool that can be that massive also has so many intricacies and ways that it can either show up or how it can be perceived or all the ways that either forgiveness may not feel like it has a space or option in some of your, like in part of your life, because there, there might be so many things trying to stop it from even existing because it has such value to me. So yeah, how do you guys want to start? You guys want to go through the questions or just straight up chatting? I feel like it might be good to share the questions in the beginning. Cool. Okay. So the first question, the prominent one, what does forgiveness mean to me? Second question. When did I last forgive myself or another? 
I just did it two minutes ago, I think, <laughs> with Jen. <laughs> what is my process around forgiveness? How do I forgive? That's one question. The fourth one, have I made room for forgiveness in my life? And the fifth one, what can I forgive right now? Yeah, so with those questions, the, the first piece that comes up is the, yeah, the, the two sides of forgiveness, right? Because you can forgive somebody else and then you can forgive yourself. And to me, whenever I, I consider forgiveness in that way, it's the, the amount of room that can come up from forgiveness, right? So if, if, it, if you've watched our previous lives and our previous concepts, there's, you know, the, the fears or the trauma that you might feel or just like the any kind of density or baggage you might be holding on to in your space, whether it's like even by yourself or your perceived actions of somebody else or actually somebody else being in the space. But then if, if there is some sort of ridge is like being pushed up against each other in that space, and you take that piece personally, I feel like pers like taking some per like something personally, like a part of your personality gets in front of you from showing up. That's when forgiveness is a fantastic tool to use, right? So if, if you're just in the flow with things and then somebody, son suddenly somebody says something that is to a part of you or like to a part of your personality, like just pokes it the wrong way or a part of you just wants to like grab it and like, you know, keep it as kind of ammunition as part of your anger or resentment bag, right, then that's where, you know, forgiveness is the fantastic little motion that instead of the ridges being stuck, it starts to loosen them up. And then over time, right, depending on the size of the wound or how deep it goes, it might automatically remove this, like the, the density level there. And you can suddenly see the person that much clearer and yourself, or just might start to make movement. And from there, you might actually be able to see what's underneath from the person's side or your side, because they're both reflections for you of like how, what's actually happening in the situation and where can I move from there, whether it means more forgiveness, whether it means having finding closure for myself or working on creating a bigger understanding of what actually happened in the situation instead of keeping my perspective to like a a walled ceiling or floor where it's more of a narrow view he says i feel like you're already drawing from a certain understanding and i i want to ask if you feel open to and everyone here feels open to describing their understanding of the word forgiveness because you, you know you're speaking about how the, the practice and the like when we access forgiveness, what it can lead to the loosening up and also the sides. And so for us to say, what does it mean to us might, um, we might be able to contribute in that stream of understanding. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll start mm -hmm. I'll start with that. So I, I can describe my side, my perception of it two ways, right? So first, the earth understanding, and then my energetic understanding of forgiveness currently. And for me, the earth understanding is uh, I'll describe it in, in waves. So if first you put something out there at a certain density level or just exists in the space, and let's say it's like vibrating at this frequency, right? It's just moving up and down high ridges. There's just a lot trying to show up in the space or trying to be forced in the space. To me, forgiveness is that frequency which starts to slow this frequency down to make it more smooth or cancels it out. So this density no longer has to exist. So it's finding whatever imprint is there and being able to see the love side of it or just the the value which is coming into more truth or coming into the more God perspective, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then the energetic understanding for me is is closer to what I was talking about with the ridges. So if there's the any kind of like density level, energetically, can you create the room for yourself which is not like how we've talked about room before where like you grow in consciousness or awareness and then you step up into that room to me it's more the room in in the space of density and forgiveness the room is actually already there you're just realizing it's there and you're allowing all parts of you especially your heart to grow and expand into that space you expand as a whole into that space instead of just expanding your container size makes sense i feel like um adding on uh, from where you shared about in the earth understanding you said it brings you back into love and truth it's a possibility when you practice this concept and for me it feels like that density or anything that is keeping me from my core is what I am trying to forgive and it's what I'm putting out or what has been put out that I'm misunderstanding that I'm wanting to forgive so for me also forgiveness is the walk back 
onto my core path or let's say like back into my stream. So if I'm walking out of my stream and acting from that space and picking up the density, which I wouldn't normally if I was present in my stream, then I am with the practice of forgiveness and you know the access to forgiveness, I'm able to slowly step back and dissolve that density because even if it's like stuck to me and I brought it back into you know my space, that dissolves in my stream and I'm able to access the you know, like the so-called, what I would say, um, the understanding, which is my my current level playing field from that space or even just a higher perspective. So it's, it's that walk back sort of home, back into my stream, back into truth, back into love for me. I'll share for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> So for me, I feel like for me, forgiveness has a lot to do with allowance and acceptance um, because what comes up for me when it comes to something between what I have forgiven and haven't forgiven, if I haven't forgiven it, then in a lot of ways, I don't accept its existence and I don't want it to exist. (laughs) And it is, and I'm fighting that or I don't, I'm just against it. And then when I have forgiven something, whether it's my past or my present or or someone or myself, I want it to exist. I, it, but I feel like it, there, that's the best way I know how to describe it. Um, you know, I might not agree with it as some might say, but I, this exists and I'm allowing it to exist. And so, yeah, that would be my simple description anyway of, of how I see forgiveness. That feels really awesome to me. Like I wasn't seeing that aspect of like simply allowing something to exist. Um, the concept of like noise comes up for me, like, especially in a container with someone else, like in relationship, I find myself forgiving like people a lot or forgiving myself a lot in relationship with people. And I'm like seeing the interaction between two people and like the space is created. And then like all this noise just fills that space and like forgiveness is that aspect where you're like acknowledging it, like what you said, Jen, like accepting that it exists. And then the transmutation of that where space can just be again. And then like love can fill that space like after the noise is accepted and like transmuted and worked through. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I feel like adding from what I'm hearing us all start to discuss, it's the, the, and it, it goes back to what I was starting to say in the beginning, but I'm now I'm now seeing this as a whole, where the the kind of density that shows up, like that, you know, then re- requires forgiveness in the spaces, is an attack idea. So, and then I'm gonna like expand the idea of attack, right? Because it's not the attack of like just punching somebody in the face. It's more like the global understanding where an attack is a focused disagreement of an idea between two individuals, or it could be yourself. But when I say focused, it's like. So if, if normally, like, you know, we could be talking, we could disagree on something and then disagreeing is absolutely fine. But if you were to, if a part of you were to take that disagreement and compact it, so it's like a very focused little funnel, and then you try to hand it to that person, that's just the idea of an attack, right? That's like trying to take everything into one little concept and then put it out there for that person to have to deal with, right? Or for yourself, right? Because you could like be constantly attacking yourself in any direction. It's just taking all of that focusing and like placing it as a weight for someone to have to deal deal with and then that's the space where from there it's where forgiveness is like okay can i take all of this and unpack and like allow it to be unpacked allow it to be seen and allow for some kind of movement to happen right because if somebody like if i were to be talking to like rachel for example and then we had that kind of disagreement and that attack happens right then it's up to me to be able to realize first of all that wasn't rachel actually attacking me that was me just taking whatever happened in that space and choosing to view it from that perspective right choosing to view something that Rachel did as her attacking me, right? That's the personality aspect that I was talking about before. But in reality, Rachel was just in her own flow of her own listening. And I was in my flow and in my own listening. Like the conversation we had couldn't have happened any other way. So then can I come back with forgiveness to that understanding that the conversation we had happened absolutely perfectly? Yes. And I'm seeing like the aspect of imagination, like wherever our core wounds are or wherever our inner child woundedness is 
like in that space that we're creating together and the noise that we're putting into that space like especially if we're working intentionally together on say like healing like being a part of NTVO, I feel all of us are naturally and organically moving from that space so when we come into a space together we even have more noise to bring into that space but I'm just seeing like how the imagination works into that. Like we put into that space, all of the noise of our imagination of what we have to heal. And we're, we're projecting it onto the screen and we're being like, I can either blame that other person et eternally, or I can work with that noise and actually come into the space that's actually being called from putting that energy into that, into that, or that noise into that space. There are like two words coming up here in both of you and one is like taking it personally and not taking it personally as if they're here to really make your life miserable because that's not often the case they're just dealing with their stuff which is showing up in the way it is showing up like you said it's probably coming from a core wound and that's the best they know how to communicate with whatever is who they are and where they are and so like this act of taking things personally versus just being able to see it and the second thing, Rachel, when you spoke about the noise is like that transmutation is like really coming back, taking that and stepping back into your own silence because we cannot control the noise outside or how someone is showing up, but we can choose to step back into our silence. So those are the two things yeah. that kind of popped up when I heard you guys say that. I'm feeling like the sense of like responsibility and forgiveness too, like by the pure act of forgiving is taking responsibility for the noise that you just projected onto the other person. Mm. Made them the creator and the, the sort of the making them the evil or the devil or the person responsible for the noise in your life, which yeah, they're the person conscious. That yeah, poking you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah when it was really just a wound being projected by yourself. Yeah. Um, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to kind of switch into a direction that was just really coming up that I wanted to share. So I don't want to cut you off though, Ritika. Go ahead. There's just this one piece is like, it can even be a moment to, if one were able to step into it of gratitude that this could show up in this space and things could get highlighted and come up for us to be responsible and expand into, you know, what mm -hmm. he just mentioned in the beginning, so that, that opportunity for expansion and gratitude can also be a way that this moment can be dealt with. Yeah. I want to just add on one more thing. It's like, okay, like the gratitude piece where, okay, if we come together and we're creating this noise together, my noise and your noise, Ritika, like is a blessing because it has something to teach each other. And that's why we come together. Otherwise we wouldn't come together. That's what I feel right now. Benito Jen, all yours. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning how to get there. Okay, so, um, so what this has been bringing up is like, there are points in our lives when it's extremely difficult to step into forgiveness. And then there are points when it, we, we allow an ease to come in around, you know, or that, that initial step before being able to forgive. And I think that's a really cool subject to discuss is what helps you cross over from that, that challenge, that inability to forgive into the ability to forgive. I wonder what comes up for you guys. I, I, that is a fantastic question. I absolutely love that because that question to me can show up in, in like, yeah, sometimes if, if the, if the attack that I was talking about before the noise balance game that Rachel was talking about just shows up really small, it might be really easy to realize it's like, okay, yeah, I can, I can be the bigger man here, so to speak. Right. And just kind of like, you know, make that, I just need that much room to kind of make the jump. But yeah, if, if, if there's something that's been for me, like building resentment or anger or that kind of like holding the sword over somebody's head kind of idea mm -hmm. for so long. Yeah. That's when, that's when that practice comes in. And for me, it's first realizing that there is something in the space that I am responsible for, right? Which I'm responsible for everything that shows up in my world, right? Even the words I use when describing things or other people are my are descriptions of myself, right? Everything that comes out of my mouth or is an expression of me is a reflection for me in that sense. So it's first for me realizing that whatever happened in that interaction with that other person or place or thing, 
is something uh, that I created in the space for me, right? It's like whether it was me consciously or something unconscious that happened like as, as a game of me, a contract, me wanting to come down to this earth. It's me realizing that I have the, I created this for myself and there is perfection in this space. So first, can I come into that self-responsibility of like, okay, I'm here and it's not that this is all happening to me. This is all happening for me. And then from there, it's like, okay, what pieces of me are so stuck that I can't actually allow myself to grow into love or acceptance in this? And for me, a lot of times it's my heart space. It's just my heart being able to, like, if I'm trying to expand my heart and this piece, like I can imagine this piece not even coming into the bubble, I know there's something about it that I cannot love, which is means that there's that part of me that I cannot love about myself. So then I just start to work and like, what way, what areas of myself can I dissolve that no longer have to stand up like a huge building or a defense wall around this concept, right? So then I like, if I, if I can break that down, whether it's through tapping or clear commands or actually sending love to that area, or just like imagine myself getting a key, right? To open up that door for myself. So I can even peek at what's behind that door. Then I can keep expanding my heart. And if I can see me, my heart actually allowed like allow myself to expand into that space, then I know that forgiveness is possible. So then I might go through the motion of saying forgiveness out loud or just putting my hands on my heart and allowing it to happen. Sometimes for me, it's just, you know, what makes me go through the challenge that you, you proposed in the question, Jen, um, is is really sometimes just grappling with the challenge of it itself. Sometimes it does, and it has even in the recent times taken more than a day for me to actually be able to get to the point that Jesus is describing as the key to that and to opening my heart. And it's not been easy. And so it's almost like I'm looking at this door and like feeling like where the keyhole is and I'm just not being able to spot it. So I want to take responsibility, but something holds me back from taking true responsibility because it's not just about taking responsibility because then it's not authentic. It's not true, you know, and that tendency is also there. It can be like through practice, you can just show up as somebody who believes that they're responsible and want to take responsibility without really unlocking the true awareness of what is the piece that you want to be responsible for in this equation. So for me, it is sometimes just about like feeling blinded to it and really moving my hands and, you know, um, taking the time and acceptance that I don't know where the key is and I'm not being able to step into, you know, complete forgiveness. And I know that because also, as he has mentioned, my heart doesn't feel like it radiates. Sometimes it feels open and operational enough and somebody would, you know, even feel like, Hey, you close to me, is something wrong with you? And I'll be like, no, my heart is open. I can hear you, but I can also feel that it's not radiating out and that it's not really flowing. So just I'm sharing the process of the, it's not always easy and it's not always instant. But then as long as I'm able to keep that heart space open and know that I'm willing to take responsibility, um, I feel like the more I don't clench or like, in any way, either to get to some position or to make somebody something, it's often like being in that space of surrender and open and willingness that I would be guided to look or something will show up in my reality um, that often supports in getting to that place. So it's different each time, but my response to that is that it's, it's not always clear. I don't have one process. It's it's different for different situations that I find myself wanting to forgive myself or someone else in. Yeah, surrender feels like the place for me to get to that point of wanting to forgive. I, I can feel like when I am in re resistance to something, it's like my ego um, or my like inner child wounded self like wants to hold on to something like some identity or some concept or some game or something that helps me to feel safe. And it does require that like letting go whatever piece of me that is that's holding on to feel safe and like accepting a new way to like accepting um, 
the pathway that actually is being formed by the very thing that wants to be forgiven. Like there is a path, like a clear pathway in front of me when I do surrender and let go and forgive and that pathway shown to me. I love that. Yeah, because we'll go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to share my answer. I want you to respond though. Okay, yeah. So I, I love how you're now getting into the aspect where it's like, yeah, going back into the faith of the flow of everything, right? So every like ev- all the all like everything, the only constant in life is change. And as everything moves, right, like all of these, like you were talking about the, before, like all the noises coming together, those noises actually want to make a song. And then can you come into Aww. the place where you see the song in that space, right? So that that is going back into the faith aspect where everything in here is actually perfect. So I, I love what you just shared. Yeah, I love the yeah. aspect of it being making a song. That's really mm-hmm. beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, that was really well said. And yeah, Rachel, I relate a lot to what you're saying um, in a big deal, because what was coming up for me in that question was it really comes, it kept, kept coming up over and over the term maturity. And there are points when I don't feel mature, I feel the opposite of mature. I just feel immature. And by that, what I think that I mean, what I feel like I mean is I feel like some sort of um, stuckness in this situation and in the story. And that's when I feel this inability to let go. And most likely I am projecting, it's almost like probably I am, I'm projecting or I'm seeing something, I'm seeing a story, no matter where that story that comes from, it's, that's, that I'm kind of, what I see as I say that I feel like I'm starting to let that story encompass me and take me over. And then when I, when I'm starting to find my own way into methods of forgiveness or steps into steps in the direction of forgiveness, there are steps I can take to uh, step back, I guess, and to see from another angle. And the moment I even feel that out, what does that feel like to me? I start to feel levels of maturity enter into me. And I feel like what I mean by, by maturity in this point is I'm allowing my experience, my understanding, and my new angles from which to look and perceive to enter into me and also to flow into me. Um, and then from there, it, it feels like it comes into, it becomes about the compassion that I'm able to give myself and that love that I'm able to give myself. And then I feel like that's the point. If I can get to that point, then I'm able to have, even if just a little bit of forgiveness, enter the space. And for me, it really has come down into let it enter the space. I don't mean, I don't have to start by directing forgiveness toward anyone toward anything, but let it exist, let it be in me, let it flow through me. And then from there, I find it, it takes its own direction and it starts to take shape. Um, And, you know, it's always different from there, I'd say. You describe maturity, Jen, like your understanding of being able to step into maturity. Well, you're asking a question, I missed it. What was your question? I missed it. Can you describe, so you said that oftentimes you feel like uh, not being able to forgive is not feeling like there is enough maturity. And I was, you know, curious about how you understand the word maturity in that space. I want to say, okay, I'll actually go to something I've been witnessing just today. And that's when I started meditating a little bit on that term. I was watching in this, this chat room, actually, um, somebody behaving in a way that I would describe as immaturely. They were being what we call a troll. They wanted attention and they were behaving in that particular way. And I was watching the um, moderator of that channel respond. And what we all, everybody in the channel expected to happen was for the moderator to just ban or to kick or to mute or something along those lines. And I was surprised to see that they were just calmly communicating to the troll. And I was, I was learning a lot from watching that because each thing that the troll said, the moderator was just very patient and actually using wisdom in the space and just saying, no, I don't see this as a reason to kick this person. Um, Like they said that out loud. And that helped me to take step back and look, take steps back and look at, okay, that's maturity to me in a lot of ways, at least for that, how that person's choosing to use it because they took step back, took steps back. And I think that's almost the simplest definition I can give for what maturity is. 
is the willingness to step back, the willingness to not react um, and come from an, a perspective that isn't just immediate, but takes time. That's how I would describe maturity. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that that's well said. Cause now what I'm like, what I'm starting to see is there's right. If, if we're talking about those like individuals talking to each other, right. So it's like, first they're like, let's say these individuals are fine and they're standing upright, like in their source connection. And then there starts to be that kind of like game or disagreement and like, right. Whenever they start to like, and you were mentioning having to step back. Yeah. That means because when they're starting to be that disagreement or they're starting to reach into that, you know, personality space, they start to like come out of their source and start to butt heads. Right. Mm -hmm. So then they can't grow anymore. And they're just kind of like, they try to move up, but they just kind of mean they're just kind of like, poof and they can't do anything else. And if they hit each other hard enough, they're just gonna fall and topple over. And then you said another key word in your previous description, which was like the story, right? Like, can I let go of the story that was happening? And yet, like in, in the example you were sharing, there's all the people who may have been looking right at the interaction play out and they see the troll say whatever he wanted to say, right? If he was even actually a troll, maybe that was just their perspective, right? But then some people might perceive it as, yeah, there's the story. It's like, oh, there's somebody saying that thing and then the moderator is gonna do something and then every Everybody's going to live happily ever after is just what happens, right? It's just going with the going along with life as the pattern that you see it instead of actually allowing that movement to flow in however it needs to flow in for the moment, right? Because it's like that maturity you were talking about isn't just like, let me just show up with wisdom. And that isn't its own story, right? The actual maturity is being able to look at the space and seeing what is needed in the space and like, what, how can this actually grow as a whole where we can all come back to being, right? I can't make this person come back into their own source connection. But if I can show up like this, that automatically stops the game, right? It stops the story from playing out how people would normally perceive it or want it to play out, or at least a part of them wants it to play out because it's satisfying to a piece of them. Mm, exactly. I feel like taking that even uh, one step further, Jesus, this description, and I love the way you use your fingers. It's like these two people and this person going back into their source connection. And let's say this person still wanted to butt like actually do this because this person is now in the greater access of their stream, their divinity, their source connection. They're able to at least have the choice now to transmute the entire narrative for it to not be stuck in a loop, which then gets repeated as stereotypes. And we keep, you know, translating it and speaking it out as stories. The story overall has now an opportunity because of this one person choosing to move back into their own source connection and then providing the choice if this person wants to mirror that back or like have that example and receive it or continue like this and this person still has the option to either engage or not engage and so on and so forth you know either transmute or not transmute at all and walk away yeah Jen smiling <laughs> yeah I, I feel I'm, I'm learning as I learned a lot as you said that because I was seeing how the stories I'm just watching this process of how stories they want to move through us like they want all, all these stories they want to happen and that's a, that's a choice. We can play with those stories. We can be anything we want to be with those stories. And we can also step back. We don't have to exist in the story. We can step back and do anything we want from the stepping back with the stories. And so that was what I was learning as you were talking. That's why I was smiling. <laughs> yeah, bringing ourselves back into choice. Mm -hmm, exactly. Hmm. I also liked how your thing, the other thing is I was watching your fingers do this. And I loved that too. And I was like, yeah, we can just stare really intensely at what's happening right in front of us and be like, Arr! or we could do this, <laughs> you know, awesome. come from source and look into source. And that means be who we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's coming up for me is like not giving up when there's a charge that comes up in the space um, as far as not like not giving up and taking responsibility for something. Like the other day I was trying to work through something and I was using like a lot of different tools and like there was a pattern of like trying to use a tool and then like feeling defeated and then like blaming the other person involved. And it wasn't until I was like willing to keep taking responsibility, keep taking until I found the right tool. And it just so happened that forgiveness was the tool that helped me to resolve it. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling maybe this sort of bridge into what is the value of forgiveness like compared to other tools like how is forgiveness different than other tools that we use and like what what is the power of forgiveness
So it's bringing up the question, is forgiveness, yeah, it, it can also be looked as a tool, but I'm asking myself, like, is forgiveness a tool or the tools we use for forgiveness is like tools for tools or what mm -hmm. is forgiveness? That's the question. Are you yeah, getting like, that? is it an outcome or a tool? Yeah. Or is it a state or is it a mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's a great way to put it, because like, I, I yeah, I love that both of the questions you both of you are asking, because to me, forgiveness, while like I can't consider it a tool, like I consider it like a piece to look at as like, help me, like, let me put on the forgiveness filter to at least help me look at a different perspective and then mm -hmm. I can come into my wholeness. But to me, forgiveness is more a transition than just a tool, like something I can like use to like hammer out like a, you know, to make the marble structure more perfectly. To me, it's like if I'm here, forgiveness just helps me like do you, uh, Ritika, you also used a fantastic word previously, transmute. It allows me to transmute the space and then transition into the new form. And I always feel completely different after I forgive or at least, like, at least allow forgiveness into the space. I feel like a completely new person. I feel like there's weight been lifted off of my chest or something's changed completely. So to me, it's a transition. Hmm. Hmm. I might even want to add like action. It's it, it requires a certain sort of will to get into the space of forgiveness. Because if it was something that I could pull out from my bag and use, like, you know, from my pencil box, remove my ruler or like my whatever protractor, you couldn't use <laughs> forgiveness unless you had, Rachel, you had said it also, the willingness to be in that space. Like if I'm not willing to mm -hmm. forgive, I couldn't pull the tool and do anything with it. Or I couldn't bring the lens or, you know, I. I can say, yeah, I'm going to forgive this person. But if I couldn't, the word forgiveness does nothing for me. Mm -hmm. That's what's coming up. So then what, like, mm -hmm. go for it. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just like, what if forgiveness is a space of being? Um, mm. Like, what if it is just being, really? Like, forgiveness is... Um, I don't know, I guess I'm thinking like, like the very things that we try to forgive, like the things that feel so heavy and dense, like what if forgiveness is just letting all of that density go and then the moment just is again. I love that 100%. Yeah, you're coming back into the space of, yeah, like your trueness and wholeness, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and basically what I was gonna say is pretty connected to that because I was gonna, I was feeling as Rithika was sharing, yeah, I can see it being a state of being. Um, and then Rachel, as you were basically sharing that, um, I could feel that that I, what came up was like, yeah, I've been in those states of mind where I'm asking myself, why can't I forgive this? Why can't I forgive this? And mm -hmm. every time I'm like frustrated with myself in that state, I just kind of like get tighter in myself. But like you, you're basically saying, I can feel that as I let go and I let exist that I'm just stepping or I'm, I'm, I'm expanding into that state of being that is forgiveness. It's just part of how I end up showing up. Well, how I begin to show up if I allow myself to be. As you're going like that, I like felt this energetic shift in my own body. Like you were going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, if you want to call it God or you want to call it source or you want to call it anything like that, that's what I feel like we get closer to yeah. as we allow forgiveness in. Can I even build on that, Jen? It's like feeling, and I've been playing with the word forgive. Oftentimes I do that with words. And when you, when you, this gesture that you just brought <laughs> in, like, can I take anything present in the moment, any density, any misunderstanding, anything, and like forgive, like give it away for being who I am in the moment and just, mm. just being. So um, it's me trying to play with the word, but also like just, this act of being able to not hold on and being willing to just like a constant mm. action of elevating and being in that state of like flow, you know? So it's just mm -hmm. interaction and uh, yeah. That feels awesome. That's awesome. That like yeah. feels like hope to me to, to, be, to be in that state. It feels hopeful. So then yeah. rules for forgiveness might be different, right? That's another area to explore. 
Yeah, and what you were just sharing with it goes back to what Rachel was sharing about like yeah, having the willpower and the courage to actually allow yourself to keep that going. So I, I love everything we're talking about, like because it does take a lot of character and courage and willpower and faith to just allow it to continue to happen like right so you you can allow forgiveness at this one point of your life and then you move forward and something else happens it could be even with the same person and it might feel like it stings a little harder but can you maintain that truth and that like massive existence for yourself to yeah the maturity which then jen was talking about was like yeah can i can i maintain that for myself because it is worth it amen hmm. So what is my process around forgiveness? Um, like, I'm even like inviting if anybody feels open to sharing a story, uh, which, you know, obviously you've forgiven and maintaining confidentiality and all of that. It's like, third <laughs> person. <laughs> um, yeah, like if somebody <laughs> wants to share that, Jen is like, okay, I know what I'm figuring out. No? <laughs> I was just imagining somebody be like not yet having forgiven and then sharing all of their anger at someone. I just laughed at it. Alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you make a good point because to me, it's it's it gets pretty obvious when you actually have forgiven versus when you think or try to make yourself believe you've forgiven somebody. So yeah, it's it's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. This might be a true test, you know, if you want to put yourself into a test, narrating a story. <laughs> I feel like sharing. Um, so like being part of MTVO teams, um, there's a lot of dynamics that come up in the space like personality structures and just like back and forth dynamics and like one thing I forgave recently was like a team member that was just like I don't know I felt like on edge after leaving the conversation and that's exactly the scenario I was bringing up earlier where I tried this and I tried this and it wasn't until I was like okay I can use forgiveness so I was like I forgive blank for blank and all those things I was trying to project of things I didn't like about this, you know, person or like the way they showed up. Like I forgive blank for blank and I just kept going through that. And like after that, my heart expanded and like it was no longer an issue anymore. Like it was just gone. Um, but that's well, that's like my practice is that I forgive blank for blank. That's what I do. When you were forgiving that individual, what do you, like, were you noticing a certain thing you were letting go of in the midst of that? Like there were certain projections or there were certain um, yeah. grudges or things like that. <clears throat> yeah, I think it goes back to those like inner child wounds that I was trying to hold on to, like how I was actually showing up in the space, but I was projecting that outward. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. like the things that had helped me to feel safe were actually the things that wanted to be let go through that forgiveness work. That's bringing up this, uh, with respect to projection, the wounds that I'm holding, whether inside me or in my field, are literally barriers sort of to having clear glasses, so to speak. And that's where projection yeah. comes from. So I can use the screen of life um, and a game with someone, but also in my own awareness, I can, I can still be cleaning up and doing the work because um, if we want to access those wounds or those places which still feel sensitive, it is possible both ways in, in the play with someone and with yourself. But what's really coming up is this, uh, this filter forming because any, something inside me wants to be held, which is forming a part of me um, and contributing to you know, the way I show up and contributing to the energetics in my field because I'm holding on to that. And it's probably even festering inside me, you know, um, then bringing that sort of noise in this space with another. I'm feeling like the gratitude piece of that again, because like without that person showing up for me in that way, I might have not been able to see those things within myself. I may have not even known they existed, but like mm -hmm. how that person showed up, it highlighted me so deeply that it triggered that wound for me to see it so that I could heal it. And like, that is something to be grateful for that person showing up in that way. Like, and I'm seeing on top of that, like there really is never a purpose to blaming except for to take responsibility again, because blame is, well, I kind of lost the, the train of thought there, but I'm just seeing like how purposeless blame is. 
but you're giving it a purpose, Rachel, when you're saying that I'm hearing like, you can blame and see what you're blaming and claim your power back, which is a choice. Yeah. But so blame is yeah. like a milestone in the ability to take responsibility. Yes. Yeah. It can be. If we make it like that, unless we can mm. we can choose to camp and blame and then have a base camp and blame and yeah, see where that I guess what I'm feeling is like it can't it can't really exist eternally. Like it is a bridge to something else. Like the reason it exists is to bridge into something else higher, you could say, or like more loving, like that's why it exists. It doesn't exist on its own to exist is what I'm feeling. Unless we force it. Well, a part of you, True. right? Because it's, it's not the wholeness of you. It's only always pieces of you that want to hold on to that, right? Because yeah, you can go into that <clears> victimhood <throat> and that is the, the power balance game that you were talking about, Rithika. But yeah, that's only a piece of you that wants to play that game. True, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Not not the allness of me, the wholeness of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I'll share my, my answer to that question. For me, my process with forgiveness is similar to what you guys were already talking about. My, so I, if I see, I'll, I'll use the example of like seeing somebody else like do an action against me, so to speak, where it could be a physical action where they pushed me or it could be energetic, but I sit there and I just, I see the situation, how it, like it wants to even play out as a play. So if, if for example, the person mm -hmm. even like, they couldn't have even said anything or they might've said, it's like, hey Zeus, blah, 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 blah. And then a part of me took that personally. And when I close my eyes, I put my hands on my heart and I, I just look at the situation and allow it to exist in its fullness, like 360. I might even imagine that energetically that person was taking like a big club and about to hit me over the head with it, right? So once I imagine that space, it's like, and I'm allowing forgiveness and acceptance and love and gratitude, everything we've talked about, like once I allow it, I see that whole play transform into an actual movement and a flow and a dance that then goes into the light of God. Like that person, could be having like a massive club going over my head and the second forgiveness comes in it turns into a flower and like um, then it's just like it completely <laughs> transforms into something else and then suddenly it dissolves and by the time they hit your head took with the me flower, and you're like oh thank you thank you like oh yeah <laughs> let's have some fun here instead yeah. that image. probably gonna yeah. come back with me next time i'm being hit <laughs> that felt really nice yeah. <laughs> like on a whole visual journey with what you just said. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because right. yeah. i'll share one more thing about that because for me also that the taking things personally a big practice i use is letting the things like actually a uh, feeling the things move through me right because if i perceive that person doing something against me it's not actually against me it's just an, an energy wanting to move through the space if a part of me pushes the ridge then right that's the personal and then it gets stuck and then i have this like gook that i get to like look at the whole time but if i see whatever this person is like like throwing at me and i allow it to exist and i see it move through me and then into the light of god there's no part of it that i then would have to forgive because it's it is a part of that movement like it transmute as rithika was saying in the moment it just mm. moves i'm feeling um like how judgment fits into this and how judgment can be a holding pattern in like the opposite direction of forgiveness. Like if I'm judging something, um, like how someone showed up or how I showed up, it like forgiveness can't be, forgiveness can't exist with a space of judgment being there. Absolutely, because yeah, like judgment, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, maybe what you say will go really well with what I'm about to say, because I feel like that was a great intro for my story which uh, <laughs> disclaimer, I'm not through with this concept. I actually feel like I want to be through with the con or I want, I wanted to share a story that I was through with, but it's really loud and clear that I'm going to share one that's not. Thankfully, this isn't a person. This is a platform that <laughs> I had, that I basically became upset with this platform. And when I sat with it as, you know, as we're doing this live, I was like, yeah, um, I felt betrayed or I have a, I feel betrayed by this platform which when we were starting to connect with this platform, um, it really met a lot of our wants. It play, you know, you would, I would describe it as like our wants and how we wanted to expand with it. Um, we felt met. That's how I describe it. I felt met, we felt met. And then this platform changed. And so many people probably know what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> but no names, no names. <laughs> 
And yeah, so I would describe um, myself as feeling betrayed. And I even spoke to Jesus or talked to Jesus about my experiences recently <laughs> with this platform and, and how I felt like it had basically turned on us. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> um but yeah i haven't fully forgiven that platform like I, I i feel like i'm beginning to as we talk about this and describe it but i have judgment <laughs> toward the platform i love <laughs> I that you're bringing in like yeah. like anything can be blamed like it could be a person but it could also be this inanimate object that, <laughs> like, that maybe people build but it sounds like your judgment is towards this program this application rather than (laughs) actually yeah um and and one of the themes throughout my life uh especially my late like my years in the last 10 years has been you know a situation either feels like a playground for me in which I can show up and be myself and expand and have fun and be silly or it no longer feels like a playground and that's how this platform I've been associating it with like the playground that it is is becoming this and this and this and then I, I feel I feel my energetic hands being like, I want to duke it out. <laughs> like, I'm not happy with this <laughs> and you need to leave my life. Um, so, yeah, if anybody has anything to say around forgiveness, <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this actually goes a little into what I was about to share before. So, yeah, it's fantastic. So, yeah, I'm glad you were mentioning that it was getting smaller because that's that's what judgment does. Right. If first the if situation, if the person is here in this like the, their space, you see them in is up here. The second you judge them, you put them in a space this small. That is just the judgment of it. Right. So it's like I could be calling that application like it's now useless. Suddenly it's like useless application and it only fits in this world for you at that time right for example so that is judgment it suddenly reduces the size and if you're reducing the size of this thing right that means you're reducing your own size you're making yourself only perceive this thing as that much which means you're not allowing yourself to see the bigger picture you're not allowing yourself to see any kind of flow movement love or any other extra piece other than useless for example so that's that's all that can exist so yes what parts of you in that point are then useless or whatever whatever you want to use so to me yeah judgment is definitely like we were saying Rachel a hindrance to forgiveness it will not necessarily a hindrance but it's definitely like a key like a a, a almost like a weighted block yeah yeah it's bringing up this word reductionist versus like being in a space mm. so when I'm looking at something I'm with the judgments I'm taking a reductionist approach this happened this happened this happened hence this is this so it's like really trying to figure what's going on with my mind without even knowing what's going on with the entirety of the platform, things behind it, the world, the energetics, which I know, you know, we're capable of going there if we want to. So it's like, you know, Jen, when you did this action, it's like when there is something inside me or in the situation trying to bring me to like reduce and create this sort of label, let's use the one Hesu said, useless, how in that moment and what could I do in that moment, which allows me to keep that room and that space, if not reducing, at least stable. And then from there on, how can I, as you said earlier, invite into the, the space perspective and angles and like yeah. you know, just all the information that wants to come in. So from wanting to actively go and reduce something and hence myself to maintaining, probably even with just the breath. And then from there, if I'm able to really have that space expand for the perspective around that change and then I can leave the platform from choice versus like <laughs> you useless thing <laughs> right. yeah I gained a lot from that um I feel like my new my new space around the situation is that I'm telling that platform basically like I first of all I'm I feel myself stopping dehumanizing it I feel like I was dehumanizing it being like you should do better like, why aren't you doing better? How come you are turning on everyone? But now I feel more like, um, like you are on the perfect journey for yourself. Look at you moving. Look at you grow- going in a certain direction, which in some way is growing. Look at you doing something that I don't want to do. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> and and thank you for, for, for op- in a lot of ways, helping me to, to see what else is out there, what else is possible. Um, and yeah, I'm reminded of something, a, a sensei that I used to work with, Jesus, maybe remind me of the quote, if you remember, but granting someone the, the space to be or granting someone the um, beingness, I can't remember what it was exactly, but something along those lines. 
So anyway, so far, thank you guys. That helped me a lot. If anyone wants to keep going, keep going. Thank you for the courage <laughs> for sharing something open and like inviting us yeah. into that space to learn from this together with you. That's courage. Yeah. Like I was like, Jen, are you sure? You're gonna- <laughs> I was like, Jen, are you sure? <laughs> but I just kept feeling it. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> it's just, um, the only thing I would add is like I know how important play is for you Jen and like having a space for play to exist and like how you maybe could have gratitude for like thank you for teaching me the importance of play and like the mm-hmm. importance of having spaces to play and how important that is in my life wow I feel that that moving through me thank you for saying that Rachel yeah I feel that in me too yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how at the end there, Jen, you were saying it's like, well, here we go. It's like there's <laughs> there's there's just this ball is gonna start rolling again. And yeah, <laughs> Rithika, what, what you were calling like the reducing, like the reduction side of it, I I, I love that perspective because yeah, a lot of the times the brain can get involved, like this brain, and sometimes even the earth brain can get involved into like you know putting a lot of processes on top of it to try to rationalize what that situation is or what it should look like or what it could be or just what you want it to look like right like putting your trying to put parts of you out there to force that thing to be something and to Mm -hmm. me right like so right the rationalizing or using your brain power like your brain is a fantastic tool but it's not the solution right so it's like your brain can help you come to a lot of like awarenesses or can help you realize things or make connections but to me, the, the actual flow of realizing what's in the space it makes can make no logical or rational like like movement or experience happen. It's like to me, it can show up in whatever way possible. And your brain sometimes cannot allow that to happen. The flow of what love can look like, what growth can actually look like, cannot be perceived by the brain sometimes. I almost want to add like sometimes it's even healthy or perfect for the brain to be stumped like fully stumped you know i I get the word stumped i don't know Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. So it's like stumped as in like, I have, I have no further process to go. Like my brain literally cannot think of any other solution. And then that goes one step further where if your brain gets fried, as in like, you're, you're trying to like, let's say I'll break this down. Like simply, like if you're trying to learn a new skill, like you're mechanically, like, let's say trying to learn the guitar and it's just taking a lot of brain power to make the focus happen. Your brain is going to get fried with all the new connections and all the way it's lighting up. And you'll feel like at the end of like that deep practice that you're just kind of like sitting there, like a lump is like, I, I can't. I can't do anything, not because I'm tired, but it's just I don't have the processing resources and power to make it happen. And yeah, getting to that point is also a good thing because when you get to that level of tired, it's a lot harder to hold up the usual defenses or like ideas or fixed ideas that you have. And a lot of times like flow and faith can come in that much more easily because you're too tired to hold up your personality. Yeah, and that's bringing up this, uh, I don't know from where in my life, but I feel like I've heard people say, I'm just too tired to fight with you. Like I'm too tired to like keep going with this. And and that's been a blessing because yes, tiredness, yes, sleep that you couldn't hold up <laughs> the defenses and the, you know, the dynamic, so to speak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you for sharing that, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> So, Rithika, do you want to go through the questions one more time, see if we feel a call to answer any? I'm pretty sure, I feel like we've answered a lot of them, but yeah, yeah you can go through them. Yeah. Um, the, you know, there's the last question. So, I'm just scanning through the questions. We've done the first, what does forgiveness mean to me? Uh, when did I last forgive myself for another? Guys, everyone's in this process. I feel like maybe forgiveness is happening live right now, and it is for us, uh, but also <laughs> probably with the people who are joining us. What is my process we've shared through our stories? How do I forgive? Um, Have I made room for forgiveness in my life? That is a question we haven't specifically asked, but I feel like putting it out there. Oh yeah, I'll I'll go first. To me, the second you ask that, I just start to see this like kind of map in front of me of all the people or places or things in my life that kind of like, there seems to be some sort of density or some sort of like misunderstanding for me around them where I feel like something was wronged or something is, you know, kind of still needs to be poked at. So it's like, yeah, you ask that and I see, well, okay, there's, uh, there's like three people in two places. So 
I, I know for me, it's like, I, I already have an idea of what's happening and I can feel myself start to expand my heart. Like I was mentioning before as part of my process, but I know that after this call, it's like, I'll have the room to be able to sit with. It's like, okay, you, thank you for highlighting this for me. And I, I want to make this room for myself. Seeing like just asking the question in a way is creating room for that because we don't even ask ourselves that, like, have mm -hmm. I made room for forgiveness in my life? Yeah. And what does that even look like to make room for forgiveness? But yeah, it, but you're, but I think we are answering it in your guys' answers. Basically, yeah, by asking the question, we're starting that process. I love it. <clears throat> Nothing's coming up for me right now around that for you, Rachel and Jen. Um, I feel like letting Jen go first for some reason. <laughs> Sure. I, the, really the only thing that has been coming up even since one of the, the first questions of the live and this one is I keep seeing a theme of disagreements. And when asked the question, have I made room for forgiveness? That's what I'm seeing. And it probably not in the same map kind of format that Jesus is talking about. It's more like what's in front of me, what's between me and these people. Um, it's very like as if I'm in this VR room and I see these people. And I'm seeing this disagreement between us. And then what starts to happen pretty naturally on its own as I'm asking that question is I'm claiming the disagreement. Like those are my disagreements. I'm, I'm the one in those disagreements. And then actually I'm noticing, oh, here comes forgiveness. <laughs> so it's happening or I'm, I'm allowing that state of being to exist now. For me, I'm feeling that that smoke spoke a lot to me, actually, like, and what I'm seeing I could do from this point forward is like, like, allow a transmuting force to be present, like forgiveness being that, like, instead of walking into a space with other people and like, just kind of letting the space throw me about, like I am the space of forgiveness and allowing that to be and like also taking responsibility as things come like it felt for me it feels like in addition to acceptance like for some reason when I feel into acceptance like forgiveness almost isn't a part of it for some reason and then when I feel into forgiveness it's like adding on to that it's like what can I forget what can I accept and what can I forgive as I'm moving through space and time with other people in my life because that's what it comes up a lot is just interaction with people there's some, something coming now after hearing the two of you is there is this question of not the exact question I asked first, have I made room for forgiveness? But there's a new question like where in myself, in my life, am I suppressing something? If Because when I'm creating room, that, that's one way to look at it. And then there is like, am I actively either like turning away from or suppressing something? And another question that's coming up is, um what am i doing or how am i contributing to the to the state of flow or the state of being because one of the things that he's just mentioned which i feel like happens when i'm in that state of like clarity in my vessel things do move through and it's very easy for them to move through but oftentimes and i've probably shared this on another life i will really be like this this person who is the you know the military style worker who will forget to take care of the, the quality of the field and my space and my instrument. And so it's these two questions are coming up for me personally. It's like, what am I doing to, so if, I, if at all, to suppress anything? And am I nurturing my instrument so that, and myself, so that this room can exist whenever it wants to exist? That's yeah. awesome. Do you guys feel complete with that question? I do. Okay. Yeah. So the last question from those five, at least, is what can I forgive right now? Yeah, that to okay. me goes back to the, oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to forgive myself for that. Pattern. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for me, the theme around what I can forgive is not what I just spoke about right there, but actually um, my body, I feel like, it, you know, one thing that's clear to me is I have relationships with people, with life, with anything 
But the one that I forget, even when I'm not actively forgetting it, even when I'm taking action to remember is my body. So I can be in the middle of yoga. I can be in the middle of giving myself vitamins and minerals and water and things like that. But I feel like the one thing that um, I can forgive is my body. And I feel like there's just like multiple layers of processes there to go through. And, but what's cool about that question is I feel like I'm giving myself the space to go through that just by looking at it. So yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, for me, it's, I, I, I love how Jen, how you were starting in, like in to go into that process. Cause for me, it's the one that I I'm still working on this. So the, this house that I'm, I'm in currently the, when I bought it, it's, uh, it was just finishing construction, right? So there I'm like every, over time, I found a couple of things that, you know, may have been like skipped over or some edges might have been like, you know, cut, you know, to make the house finish faster, so to speak, which is fine. But I, I sometimes look at those pieces, like if I, I find one that hasn't been fixed or I hadn't seen before, and my mind almost immediately wants to go to blaming the construction people or the contractors for, well, why didn't you complete the house? Like, why didn't you, you know, do it's like, but the thing is, I chose this house. I bought it as this and everything that's showing up inside of it is a reflection of even how even I hold my own home, right? My own temple, my body is all of this is just showing me. It's like, in what areas did I skip, you know, little turns or like little areas in my body just to get a nice looking solution or a nice looking outcome. Mm. Wow. You just highlighted a whole lot of house related stuff for me, but <laughs> Um, that's not like the juiciest thing. The juiciest thing is around food and like control of food and like my choices around food and that sort of thing. And I've never really thought about using forgiveness for those things. And now like I'm being inspired to look at like what I can actually forgive around that, that maybe I haven't even looked in the, like the certain directions to look for. Testing live through the highlights. Um, <laughs> yes. um, just forgiveness around how I have treated my body. And I, despite the awareness, um, even at this point, do continue to treat my body. And it's highlighting like this, this mindset that I spoke about of sometimes just doing enough to keep it going. So I, I will take care of it but so that I can continue to show up on a live, to do the work, to meet people, to live up to the benchmarks and standards and the will and all of that. And so it's like, I'm forgiving myself for stifling my own play and I'm forgiving myself for, and I'm choosing to do that even after this live to, to really be in a more respective union with my body, so. Mm and everything else that you guys shared too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Those are all the five questions. Cool. Yay. So yeah, wonderful discussions. I love everything we talk about, like especially this forgiveness one. It feels like it's, to me, it feels like very close to heart. Like it feels very just like healing, even as we were talking about all of this. So I, I love it. So I feel now if, if there's any questions that people watching want to ask, like we'll give some time and answer some questions if you guys are open to it. And in the meantime, if you guys also have questions, feel free to ask and just, you know, be live for probably five to 10 more minutes, probably. Are you checking, Jesus? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Okay. Well, I, I see one question earlier from Jasprit and she... I'm not sure if, I think this was probably in reference to something we were mentioning before, because it was like 47 minutes ago, but she asked, when the thing in that space returns, is it to challenge our acceptance? And if, if I'm tuning into this correctly, this is, right, so it, it's more in the in the reflection, right, if, if there's a dynamic between you and an individual, if you're being highlighted for like a certain piece of you, 
or if if right you heal something and then it just keeps coming back around like a pattern shows up then yeah it's it's it could be to challenge your acceptance that's one of the things like if, if that's specifically for you to work on the thing is if a pattern or a story like we've talked about before keeps coming up when it keeps coming up each time it gets louder and louder and heavier and heavier each time until you're willing to look at that piece that it's actually trying to highlight right because the first time it comes up it might just you know you might look at it for a piece and be like oh yeah it's just highlighting this piece right here and you're like okay just you just kind of avoid it or sweep it under the rug or let it go and move on and then you this next time it might highlight these two points for you right like it's like your brain and then like your your heart and then but the wholeness of it, it's like are you actually willing to look at at what this thing is actually trying to poke at you and sometimes yeah acceptance is is could be like a, a big key for it of trying to even allow that kind of highlight to exist i feel like adding to what you just said jesus is like it will get louder and does often um, get louder when there is the attitude of sweeping under the rug but i've also seen that something which was really close and i'm and if you know i've been doing the work and willing to look at it and really like in acceptance at deeper, deeper levels from it being here in my space, it starts to show up then in a more distant reality. Like it might just be like, oh, I'm passing by on the street and now I'm seeing that play out. It's still in my reality, but it's not really close. So I'm just bringing like the two sides of it, the level at which we are willing to look at and step into acceptance, the depth of it can also be seen in our reality and the not looking and really like pushing it away the the loudness of it can also be felt in our reality yeah jen rachel anything to share or move on to the next question like move on yes yeah, same yeah cool so then penny asks in the middle of a situation that you know you'll need to forgive, is forgiveness a way to reach forward and heal the situation in the triggering moment? I'll answer my side real quick first. Tim, like with a little of what we described earlier, yet yeah, forgiveness absolutely heals and it absolutely makes room and it expands. It's like forgiveness is, is a massive transition and movement tool. So yes, forgiveness is, is kind of like that magical salve you put on a wound that automatically starts to heal it. Once you bring in forgiveness, you might also find like some other layers or processes to work on or other parts of that wound that maybe forgiveness isn't, isn't necessarily a part of. Maybe something's been stuck and it's for you to like kind of move like a little fixed idea or belief structure that was outdated. But yes, forgiveness is a beautiful healing self. And if you can't do it in the moment, you can always do it later. Cool. All right. <laughs> Rithika just wanted to dance for a second. That's fine. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> it was jolly uh, yeah it was very jolly okay so then my mom asks a question when i choose to forgive and the same feelings come back even louder what is a good practice to let it go so this goes back a little bit to my previous answer where yeah so forgiveness is is healing or forgiving a piece of that motion and if it comes back louder that means that a part of you still wants that game to play out Right. So that that's the only reason that that like is kind of being created for you. It's like I would recommend to first look at, you know, sit with yourself. Right. If, if you can first come into a place of acceptance of like opening up to see something bigger than you've kind of maybe tried to look at before and then notice what parts of you want to see this game play out, like what part of you wants to keep playing this game. And then it might mean that is forgiving a part of yourself or forgiving someone in the past that isn't necessarily this person that it's having to do with at the time. I would add on yeah. to that. I would say um, other questions you could ask are, what do I disagree with here? What do I not want to exist? Because um, for me, I noticed those types of questions help me to really confront the part of me that's recreating the situation because I can accept and forgive layer by layer by layer by layer. Um, and that layer is gonna be possibly infinite or those layers are gonna be possibly infinite. So then let's now go further inward and, and look at what in me is in this disagreement and what in me doesn't want this to exist. There is a forgiveness practice sheet that I feel like 
um, we could post like in the comments, but it can be a really good tool to like highlight those layers. Um, and basically like you say it out loud, like um, one of the, the, the first statement is like forgiveness brings peace. And then you feel what comes up for you. And then you forgive what comes up based on saying that statement. And it drills down into like deeper, deeper levels where you get to a point where you're like, I didn't even know that was there to forgive. So I feel like saying statements out loud of like truths can highlight what's the illusion. Like we're talking about illusion and like the things that we project on. If you say the truth, the illusion is going to be highlighted and then you can forgive what you're aware of in the illusion. And I'm bringing one angle for like when the truth is being highlighted and when something's getting louder is the one of the ways to look at it is also that this is loud because um, I'm willing to look at it right now. So I'm seeing like there's beauty, there is of course work, but it's something shows up and it's standing up in my awareness that means now I can do the work and I can step into like from illusion to truth. So the, the loudness can also be seen as a friend. Um, although it's a choice, mm -hmm. like do we want it to be loud or not? But if it is, it's unmissable. And if it's unmissable, that's definitely a moment that's catchable, you know? So just be like adding that. Beautiful. So I'm not seeing any more questions. So I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everybody watching. Thank you, Rithika, Jen, Rachel. Rachel, thank you for joining the MTVO class group right here. It was an absolute yeah. pleasure. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. It was adorable to see you read your mom's question and also to take the first stab at it. <laughs> yeah. Feels nice. That's great. <laughs> All right. So yeah, thank you guys for this was the forgiveness discussions. And uh, Rithika, do you want to share anything about what's coming up next? Yeah, we have a few more concepts to go in what we're sort of calling season one, um, pretty much uh, like that. So the next week, we will have the next concept posted. Do you all already want to reveal the concept or not? Is No, probably not. No, right? let's wait until the post. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Tune in next time. Yes. <laughs> After these messages. Cool. Yeah, so join us in the forgiveness week. Let's all forgive. And then we will see you next month, next Thursday. Mm -hmm. That's me signing off. Okay. Bye, Yanara. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.